Hello, everyone, and welcome to State of the Game for which date is it? It's the 7th of September, 2017. All the people are probably going, who's that guy? Uh, I'm not Hamish, I'm not Yannick. Hamish and Yannick are out of the country, so I'm Petter. I actually have one of these. That's me. And uh, I'm usually right here, actually. Uh, behind the scenes, this is where we take care of the camera and stuff. So that's where, where I am. Uh, right now as well, but I'm actually I'm not 100% alone. Uh, I actually have these wonderful gentlemen with me I'm just gonna let you say hello real quick Hey guys. Hey, hey look at that. How are you? I'm gonna mute you again So they're muted again uh, before we start talking to to them about well, we're gonna talk a bit about update 1.8 Eight. We're gonna talk a bit about, well, we're gonna talk about skirmish, but we're also gonna talk about one thing that we haven't touched on yet, so you'll get some new news today. But first of all, let's just go through things happening on the live game. There was a maintenance this morning, it, was, it took care of some of the usual back-end stuff that we do on Thursdays. And as some people pointed out, no, the RPM glitch has not been fixed yet, sadly. Uh, sadly, it turns out that it needs a client side fix, which we'll be deploying as soon as possible. Some people might know that getting a patch out on, say, yeah, like PlayStation 4 and Xbox One can be a bit tricky, but we're going to push the PC patch as soon as we possibly can and then push out consoles as quick as we can. But do remember, though, that using the RPM glitch is a bannable offense. Uh, Bandwave has already gone out. We banned quite a lot of people. I'm not gonna give you exact numbers right now. We might get back to that. And we're probably gonna do at least one more, probably more, if uh, you guys don't behave. So don't use the RPM glitch, leave it alone, and you won't get banned. That's as simple. It's just that simple. Um, I don't have any updates on the update 1.8 PTS, sadly, and uh, not on the next global event. I know some people are really, really waiting for that, uh, but we'll have news about that very soon. As soon as we pop possibly can, we're uh, going to talk to you about those things. But let's jump from all of this to back to update 1.8, and let's talk to Terry and Keith, all the way from Redstorm. Hello, guys. Hi. Hey. Hey, again. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, Petter. I'm glad that you're here. I'm very glad to have you guys here as well. Yeah. Can you just, for the people who might have missed you before, can you please just give us a quick introduction to who you are? Keith, after you. Uh, I'm Keith Evans. I'm a lead designer here at Redstorm on the division. I'm Terry Spear, the creative director here at Redstorm on the division. Uh, Splinter Shield in chat is asking you to put up the horns. So, please, Terry. Oh, put up the horns. There we go. <laughs> so, today we're actually going to talk about one of the features coming in update 1.8 the new PvP 4 versus 4 mode skirmish. Yes. There's a horn. There are the horns again. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> can just give us. We, we briefly touched upon both skirmish and resistance during State of the Game last week, but I. Can you just give like a high-level update on what Skirmish actually is? Sure. It's 4v4 TDM, right? Here's the moniker. Get your PvE out of my PvP. There it is right there. That's the tagline. It's what people have been wanting for a while. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to put on, while we're talking about this, I'm actually going to put on a video uh, taken from Skirmish. And uh, people are going to get a first look at what the uh, game mode actually looks like. Uh, there won't be any sound, but let's have a discussion about it while that's playing. Perfect. Uh, Excellent. I love that the player in question here is called Faye is Bay, which is awesome. <laughs> so first of all, just to talk about what we're actually seeing. I know you guys aren't, but we have this intro screen with you see the four people from your team. That's correct. It was big important for us to have really showcase our characters for the first time. Show the player your four-man squad, and we have a lot of sexy stuff people can put on. So Absolutely. So let's get up close and personal and let people see it, and also let people inspect. Um, that's something we're going to go on a little bit later, but the best person in the match, you're going to be able to inspect them and see what gear they're wearing, see what uh, weapons they have and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it's going to be actually a really good kind of teaching tool for, uh, for players getting up to speed with PvP who maybe didn't jump in before. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Um, and, and maybe it's a little secret. I'm going to give a secret. Ready go for, for a secret? You're going to be able to do an emote when you're on that screen. So, you know, you can select a certain emote, put it in a slot, and you can you can do a little backflip, do a Macarena, you know, whatever you want to show your teammates <laughs> that you know how to do. You'll be able to do that on that screen. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah, that's a secret, though, just for state of the game people. Don't tell anyone else. <laughs> So when we were talking about skirmish, and we're, as I said, we're watching it on the screen right now. How big is a skirmish arena? So they're they're kind of um, they're they're new arenas, right? So they're totally kind of their own contained spaces. But I'd say they're roughly the size of some of our largest landmarks or extraction zones. So think like maybe like Bryant Park or some of the uh, the rooftop gameplay up in DZ eight and nine. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're pretty big, but they're all about getting you into combat quickly, right? We want to minimize run times. Yeah. So. If I had another coin, if I had another phrase to coin, it'd be it'd be less running, more gunning, baby. Oh dear. <laughs> that's actually God. that's gonna we're gonna sell t shirts with that <laughs> on it. So Yeah. But just, but just he's right. Bryant Park, you know, that size just we, we custom built these things. And they're they're for this four V four size. So they're they're pretty optimized for that. Let's just make one thing clear. There are no, compared to Last Stand, which is these huge areas you fight in, there are no NPCs, anything like that. This is just pure team deathmatch from start to finish. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we've kind of redone the spawning system. So you come in in waves uh, with your, your teammates. Like if you have a team wipe, you all come in together, kind of close in proximity, and you can charge back into battle. Um, you know, it's probably an average of at most 10 second run times until you're back in a fight. And that's tops, man, that's tops. So moving on to how the scoring in Skirmish actually works. We see a counter here at the top of the screen. Uh, currently it says five and three. What do those numbers mean? So, you know, we obviously have a lot of ways to revive players. Um, so. Scoring actually takes effect when you send someone all the way to the death screen, right? So you down them, but you have to get up and finish them. That scores a point. So if you are playing tight with your team and you're reviving people and you're getting people back up and popping recovery link at the right moment, you can actually take points from the other team and kind of, you know, uh, even the odds a little bit more. Yeah, you're essentially counting to, to top kills. Right. So what's uh, looking at ranks? Last Stand has ranks, UG has ranks, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, how does ranking that kind of wor ranking work in Skirmish? Well, what we're doing, uh, we're taking the Last Stand rank actually and repurposing it. So we're gonna we're gonna make that the PVP rank. That might not be what we call it at the end of the day, but uh, you can rank up this PVP rank in Last Stand or Skirmish. We know there's a lot of people already at max rank, so we have plans for rewards. But essentially, in a match of Skirmish. You're gonna. It's gonna function a lot like it does. A lot like it does in Last Stand, where you're you're earning XP for actions that you do, um, and at the end of the match, that will accrue, and you'll have a total, and that will apply to the rank, and uh, and then you'll creep up and have the potential to earn skirmish caches, uh, and then post rank 40, right? Keith, we're, we're raising the rank. We're raising the rank. So you know, we know a lot of people are already sitting at the max rank. Uh, there will be a lot of new players jumping in who maybe haven't played Last Stand yet. Um, so we're going to bump the rank up all the way to 99 uh, and give you give you this thing to to keep building towards. Uh, but then taking it one step further, uh, you know, at set increments after post uh, rank 40, we'll be giving better rewards, unique rewards like classified caches. Mm-hmm. Classified caches, everybody. That's right. Yeah. So again, this will give players the opportunity who don't have Last Stand. To increase that rank, you can earn the, the vanity and items that you weren't able to earn, you know, before, and and now you can push all the way to 99 and get classified caches. You know, the, the GE's over. How do I get classy caches? That's awesome. Uh, it's important to note also um, that skirmish is normalized, right? We, you know, before we talk about scoring, we talk about rewards and all that stuff. This is just like last stand. It's a normalized play. I wanted to point that out before we got any further. Right. I know we'll talk about balance later, but absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, looking at kind of the the end screen, I've actually seen this video before, and we're going to get to it sooner or later while this is running. Uh, there's this scoring board as well. What kind of activities do you expect people to to do during a skirmish match? What kind of uh, activities are they rewarded for? 
Oh, to earn XP, you mean? Yeah. Uh, you know, the similar gamut, you know, when you when you down someone, uh, when you finish them, if you assist on a kill, healing, reviving, all those things. Yeah, it's, it's the ones that we had in Last Stand, um, but one new way to um, score extra points is if you were the person who put someone in that down state when they're actually finished uh, and score a point for your team, you get an extra um, mark uh, that kind of boosts your score even higher. All right, yeah. cool. So how does matchmaking work in Skirmish? Mm, you'll love it. I'm sure you'll love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, so it's, you know, we're kind of, once again, we're building on Last Stand. Uh, we have a matchmaking rank behind the scenes that keeps track of your overall, you know, win-loss, kill-death, your recent performance. Uh, and it's trying to put you with other um, similarly skilled players. Um, and then we've taken that kind of one step further, like Terry mentioned, in that pre-round screen where you see your whole team, the person on your team with the highest matchmaking ranking, that's the person up front. That's the person kind of front and center that you can inspect and kind of see what, what's he doing, you know? What, are, what is his exact KD? What is his build? Yep. His or her build. Right. And how long are the matches? How, how have you balanced kind of the length of play of a skirmish match? Well, I think the PTS will help us really dial that in as it stands right now. You're, you're going to a kill count of 20 or a timer of 10 minutes. Yeah, so they're pretty, they're pretty snappy matches. You know, we want these to be kind of a, a fast, you know, session-based activity um, that you just kind of jump in and play a few really intense matches. All right, cool. I think the match is slowly coming to a stop here on the screen, actually. Uh, they're going to let it run all the way, but we, we are going to talk about one more thing when it comes to update 1.8 that we haven't talked about before. It was hinted Ooh. in certain articles that you would be able to do this. Oh, here's the victory screen now. I'm teasing it a little bit, bit more, keeping people a bit uh, uh, interested. So there you go. There's the end screen. And it's not final. Yeah, you know, no, 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 we're no. Still, still iterating, but uh, we're, yeah, we're getting there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what we're going to talk about is actually what's called gear optimization. Ooh. Boy, yeah, that's exciting. What would you like to know about gear optimization, Petter? Well, first this of is all, the thing I am pretty excited for. First of all, what is gear optimization? That's a great question. <laughs> uh, I guess the best way to sum it up is it's the next evolution of gear improvement. You could already recalibrate, right? And there were some limitations on recalibration uh, that we placed on you, and then we we gave you the classies, the classified gear, and we said, hey, now you can recalibrate two stats. But now. We're giving you the next step, right, which is essentially gear optimization, which will allow players to chase the ultimate build. Yeah, chase the perfect build. Yeah, chase it, baby. God rolls around the corner. <laughs> so what kind so of that's what it is? What kind of items is included in this system? So, so you're you're going to be able to optimize, you know, all your weapons and uh, your six gear slots. So you know your chest piece, mass, things like that. Um, and when you're when you kind of optimize it. You're, you're really going in, and anything that's not min-maxed, uh, you're bumping slightly higher on that stat, right? And you can kind of incrementally push towards the, the perfect min-max build. Right. Uh, so why are you doing this instead of like the typical way we've done it before when it comes to <laughs> increasing the power level of the players in the world? Uh, we've introduced a new world tier. Why aren't you doing that uh -huh. this time around? That's a good question. Yeah. Actually, we've had some great discussions about that with ETF. ETF, what's up? Um, ultimately, we came to the fact that the, the conclusion that we just didn't want to reset people's progress on all the gear that they've spent time accumulating you know, over the life of the summer. Absolutely. And so why not take a new approach? Why not? I mean, there's, there's more stuff we're going to talk about how, how this works practically in the game, but... Essentially, with gear optimization, we're revamping a lot of the visualization mm -hmm. behind the gear and the numbers and that system. Give you something new to chase, give you new activities to chase that stuff in, stuff like resistance and stuff that will really test your power level. Um, when, you get, when, you, you know, when, you, when you push the button and say new world tier, that's cool because, sure, everything gets harder and, and we're going to increase the difficulty in other ways, but I, don't, I didn't want the reset button. I didn't think Keith didn't want it either. Yeah, I think, you know, we have a lot of rare gear now, right? And we've <clears throat> set these uh, goals for players, like collect the classified gear as it's coming out, you know, gather your exotics. 
And a lot of people are still pushing towards that goal and we have so much more to release, right? There's so many more carrots to put out there. Mm. Um, there's a lot more stuff to find and it's just not the time. Yep. Right. So how does it work when I log in the first time? How does it work practically in the game? Oh, Keith, are you ready? Yeah. So <laughs> when you log in to uh, 1.8 the first time, you're on your character select screen, you see your gear score. Uh, it's not going to say 256 anymore. What? Um, yeah. So the gear score is now reflective of the quality of the rolls of all on all your items. So if you have a really good armor roll and uh, a really high primary stat and majors and minors, your gear score is going to be closer to the cap. Um, so the new gear range for World Tier 5 is 256 is now like, that's the bottom line. That's what everyone was at. No one's going to go below that unless you start whipping World Tier 4 gear or something. And you can push up to 286. That's the new cap. So running around the world, you'll see, like, see players uh, with different gear score, your loadout screen. You might have your Lone Star build totally min-max and awesome, and now you're working on your Alpha Birds build and kind of boosting that gear score up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important to note that, again, power levels are essentially the same. We're just granularizing that value so you have a better understanding of just how powerful you are. Right? Yes. So it's a, it's a huge tool, even you know, in, when gear drops in the world, being able to see, like, how good is this you know, striker chess piece. Oh, it's 256? Burp, burp. Nope. You know, oh, it's 270. It adds a lot of excitement to every gear drop, right? Like, yeah. we're so used to seeing uh, a gear set, uh, you know, green loop pillar, and it's just like, well, I already have all that stuff, right? I guess I'm going to sell it. Well, now it's like I go up and I look at it, and if that thing drops with, like, a 282 gear score, I'm slotting it in. It's going to be better than what I have. Maybe I reroll one stat, you know? Um, it makes every loot drop a little bit more exciting. Yeah, it's super, super exciting. I'm, it's it's all kind of wrapped into one, this new visualization, the gear optimization. So, you know, just imagine going to this new optimization station. I, I, I'm sure we'll talk about this in a minute, but there will actually be a place in Camp Clinton in the terminal next to the recalibration station. It's going to be an optimization station. You're going to take your gear there, and you're going to watch that number climb yep. every time you go and optimize it. And so you get this physical, this tangible reward and visual identification that you are better, right, than you were before. Absolutely. Huge, huge. And if nothing else, then saying optimization station is kind of the best thing in the division right now. Yes. <laughs> so last week on State of the Game when we were showing off VSP, uh, we discussed D-Tech, Division Tech, br very briefly. So how does, and we, we kind of hinted that it's going to be important in 1.8. So can you guys kind of tell us how Division Tech plays into gear optimization? Yeah, so, you know, people have been collecting Division Tech for a while now, and it's been accruing, and there's not been a great use for it. Um, Keith, how much D-Tech do you have? Not enough. I need to get more. <laughs> uh, I've seen people posting on Twitter, like, I got... 3,000 D-Tech, and I'm like, whoa, that's, <laughs> I'm not even close to that, <laughs> um, but good for them. Um, but now D-Tech and, you know, the, the default, you know, e-credit currency, those are going to be used to, um, at that optimization station. So I'm telling you right now, if you want to start doing some D-Tech runs, uh, it will be useful, and we're going to add a lot more ways to get D-Tech uh, in 1.8, a lot of places around Westside Piers. Yeah, I think the Dark Zone... Again, we'll play with all this stuff, but I think the Dark Zone will be the most lucrative place to get D-Tech. But as we talked about on the last day of the game, it's going to be in Westside Pierce. And as Keith mentioned, there'll be other ways to get it as well. But D-Tech e-currency, that's the juice that you need to optimize your gear. Yep. So how much powerful can your gear actually become? Like, how, how does it feel when you have... Yeah. Um, when you have accrued all the, and you have optim went to, you've gone to the optimization station. Can never get enough saying that. Many, many <laughs> times you've optimized your gear. You have the bill that you really wanted, fully optimized at the optimization station. Mm -hmm. How powerful do you feel? Well, you know, go ahead, Keith. Go, go, go. Well, I mean, so the best way to think about it is, in a way, a lot of our players have played with these builds because when they go into last stand. The way normalization works is it boosts everything up to its max, right? You're sitting at like 35% armor. Um, all your primary stats are, are boosted. Um, so in a way, we're giving you uh, the ability to push to that kind of like perfectly min-maxed build that you've been playing in last stand and that you'll have in skirmish, but use it everywhere in the game. So 
you know, this is going to let you push further in PVE content than you could before. Mm. Um, and the, the biggest thing that's changing is that, you know, before you could go in and recalibrate um, your stats and your majors and minors, but you couldn't touch your armor roll, right? Like if there was a very rare piece of gear and you finally get the drop and you inspect it for the first time and you see it has just a bottom barrel armor roll, that piece is basically trash to you, mm -hmm. right? You have to throw it away. Now you can take it to the optimization station, invest in this piece and improve the armor roll uh, all the way up to its max. So in terms of really raw power, that chasing that 35% armor uh, is kind of the best thing that you can push for. It's, it makes you feel a lot more resilient. Yeah, players have, essentially players have played with this power curve before, but you've never been able to see it or feel it in PVE because there was random elements. Now we're taking random out of the equation. You know, I mean, obviously there's still RNG with the drops, but now you can take an active role in making that the best piece of gear because that's the one you wanted. And now you can go get that flawless legendary run, you know. And yes, that means you can take that into the dark zone that's not normalized, right? So I mean, I'm sure we'll have a conversation about that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's actually going to hopefully kind of push people to want to go in the dark zone, right? Because before you come up with someone against someone with that perfect min-max build and you just haven't had as much luck, it's, that is a tough fight for you, right? Now, if you've invested in your build and you're looking at it and you're like, every roll is as good as I can get it. My gear score is 286, or possibly a little bit higher if you um, have invested in some classifieds. Um, you can have the confidence to go in and take on the unnormalized PvP. Mm -hmm. It's going to be super awesome. Yeah. One thing, or one question that I think is quite important, though, is how do you keep the game balance when you're introducing this? Well, from a PvE standpoint, that's a good question, and this is going to touch on philosophies a little bit. There's content right now that a lot of the player base can't finish, they can't do. And so we were very comfortable with giving players more power without increasing the power of the AI at the same time. So I want players to be able to finally finish those legendary missions. I want you to do those incursions because you are you are creeping towards this ultimate god role with gear optimization. So I think the balance is going to be wonderful. Obviously, we've tested it a lot, and mm -hmm. I know there's already people that can do that stuff with the gear they have. I would argue that maybe they've had really good luck with roles that allows them Absolutely. to do those things, along with player skills. So from a, PvP, P, from a PvE standpoint, I'm not concerned. Right? I'm, I'm, we're empowering these people. We're empowering even me, because <laughs> this <laughs> stuff I can't do, damn it. <laughs> but we're empowering them. Now, from a PvP standpoint... Yeah, I mean, from PvP standpoint, like I said, you know, we've actually have a ton of testing on this because it's what we've been um, testing with Last Stand for, you know, the last six months or so. Um, so now, those Last Stand balance uh, that p players have been feeling, there's a chance to experience that also in the dark zone now. All right, awesome. There's actually, I have a couple of some paper here, and at the top of my paper, speaking of balance, I'm just going to jump in real quickly because people are asking about it in chat as well. Uh, last week when Yannick was playing, we kind of got a little Easter egg there. What's <laughs> happening with stamina, guys? We have detectives, apparently, that are watching State of the Game because, like, <laughs> immediately there was, like, a breakdown on Reddit of what was happening. But, yeah, we are adjusting um, stamina and toughness um, for, you know, endgame players. Uh, you know, previously it had always been one stamina is 30 toughness. 1.6 took that back to 1 to 15. Um, you know, with all the new power and the new DPS that we're letting players have, we feel really comfortable bumping that back up. It's going to once again let players uh, push further in PvE content. It's going to let you push to higher waves uh, in resistance. Um, and yeah, it's just, it makes the game uh, just overall feel more consistent in the time to kills. Yeah, and, and of course you're going to say, wait, doesn't that make it spongier, Keith? Not necessarily. You know, some of the classified gear, we're giving you reasons to push into the stamina build. We won't go into details about that. Uh, but, you know, the, the increased DPS and, and things like that, it feels good. Yeah, it feels great. And we this is one we've, uh, we've been playing with for a while, so I can't wait to get it on the PTS. Yeah. So let's uh, jump real quickly back into gear optimization. And... Uh, with all the with the new gear score or with the gear score being up through optimization, how about new dark zone brackets? Is that something? No, again, 
the power levels that players are going to be playing with are the same, right? So you'll go up against, right now, if you jump in the dark zone, there's potentially someone running with at the level of 286. You just don't know it, right? You, we, there's no way to visualize that. So in that sense, it's going to feel the same. Now, you'll, I'll be more powerful because yep. I'll be able to optimize my gear. We're essentially telling everyone that you can be that guy who kills everyone in the dark zone. You know, or you, you, can, you can feel that. We don't need a new tier for these players because they're already all playing together. Uh, we're just giving you a way to better differentiate all of that. Now you can just feel your character getting, you know, more powerful uh, with time. Yeah, we're taking luck out of it, essentially. Yep. All right. Uh, speaking of the Dark Zone, in the Dark mm, Zone, like you can go rogue. We're what? not going to talk about You're that crazy. today. <laughs> but can we give a little, little tiny spoiler of what people can expect during State of the Game next week? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Um, yeah. Rogue 2.0, that's what we're calling it. Um, a whole bunch of changes. Um, I get shaky thinking about it because I love the Dark Zone. But as a teaser, one of the, one of the big elements of, of Rogue 2.0 in the Dark Zone is that friendly fire will now be off in the Dark Zone. There, is no friendly, there will be no friendly fire in the Dark Zone, which means you have a, a button press. There is a toggle to go rogue. No more accidental rogue. No more chasing manhunts and then accidentally hitting your buddy and then having the whole group the group turn, on turn you. to you because you're the weak prey at that yeah. moment. We'll talk all about what that button press means, how you do it, and all the other changes. A lot of them. We'll talk about it next week. That was like the smallest little piece of it. Yeah. So, but yeah, footage spread, next yeah. week. Spread the word. Blow it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know you guys are super excited to talk about that. But uh, we'll get yes. back to the story shot. I know some people are going, no, that we're not oh, talking about it this week. I'm, I'm so, so, so sorry. But we should uh, be back with, yeah, talking about Rogue 2.0 and uh, Resistance next week. And yeah. uh, it's going to yeah. be a good one. Yeah. And we'll have some gameplay for you as well at that point. So thank you very much, guys, for showing up again. It's been great having you. Thank you for all the information on both Skirmish and, uh, and gear optimization. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Cheers. thank you. Always good to be here. And I'm, I'm going to mute you again. But thank you again, guys. Bye. And I'll right. see you Bye. soon. Thanks, everybody. Love you, fam. All right. A big thanks to Red Storm for coming on and talking about... Uh, gear optimization and of course skirmish. I'm just going to quickly reiterate what we said at the beginning of State of the Game if you missed that. Uh, maintenance is morning, fix and backend stuff. The RPM glitch is still not fixed. It needs a client patch and we're working as hard as we can to get that out to you. Uh, the PC patch is probably going to come before the consoles because consoles is always a bit tricky to patch uh, but we're going to get that to you as soon as we possibly can. Remember also that the, using the RPM glitch is a bannable offense. We banned a lot of people this week, and we are not afraid to ban more. Also, do remember that it's, that ban is a one strike against your account. Do anything like that in the future, you're gone. You're uh, permanently banned. So remember that and keep that in mind. Don't get banned. Don't use RPM glitch. And we will have more information about, of course, update 1.8 PTS is coming. And uh, then we'll also have some more news about the next global event uh, as soon as we possibly can. That's everything from us here today. We're actually, uh, yeah, we're at 28 minutes, so we're going to stop it there. Thank you guys so much for coming. And Yannick and Hamish will be back next week. Oh, those guys are uh, actually uh, waving again. They're muted, though. So, But we'll uh, see you guys next week. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming.